Hi, this is Angie with the New Normal Society. Welcome back to a class of your own. Today we're talking about teaching math in your homeschool program. And just like so many of the videos that we've done before, this is a topic that you could spend hours on. So my goal today is to hopefully help you narrow down what you're going to teach and give you a few ideas for creative ways to teach it. There are two things that you need to think about when you're preparing to teach math in your homeschool program. The first is what are your students' goals once they have finished your homeschool program or once they graduated from school? For college preparatory students or students who are going to need to pass standardized tests, you're going to want to follow a more traditional math curriculum. And in the description, I'll place some resources that can help out if they need help, such as Khan Academy and also Jump Math, which we'll talk about later in this program. But you want to stick to a more traditional method of teaching math if that's the case for your student, if they're going to be going on to a more traditional program. Our focus for this video will be on students who are non-traditional students and who may have significant learning challenges or differences. The second thing you want to think about is what is meaningful to teach and what's meaningful for your student to learn in your homeschool program. As an advocate and a parent and an educator, I have always fought for our kids to have equal access to the general curriculum. But at a certain point, their priorities are very different. So if you have a student who is learning language and communication or safety, or maybe their focus is on social skills, it might not make sense to teach things like quadratic equations or long division. So think about what is meaningful for your student to learn and that will help you decide what to teach. There are some basic concepts that can and should be taught in a homeschool program and we'll take a look at those here. We have number recognition, counting, basic operations like single and double digit addition and subtraction, rope counting by twos, fives, and tens, and that leads to basic multiplication and basic division. Simple measurements such as inches, feet, and miles, and also quarts, cups, and gallons. Money and currency, fractions, and geometry and shapes. So now that we know what we want to teach, let's talk about how we're going to teach it. Here's the thing. The way you teach math matters. I have met so many people and so many students who tell me I'm no good at math, I can't do math. Math anxiety is a real thing. There are people who just freeze when you put a math problem in front of them. And I always remind them, first thing, it's not that you can't do math. Maybe you just haven't been taught math in a way you can understand. And this is such an advantage in homeschool. You can teach in a way that your student can learn. If you've seen our previous videos, you know I'm a big fan of hands-on and experiential learning. We've talked about using Lego in your homeschool program to teach everything from counting and basic operations like addition and subtraction to geometry. We also, in our last video, were in the kitchen using cooking and culinary skills to learn about measurement, fractions, and also budgeting. So I'm a big fan, and those are great places to start. Now we're going to talk about some other ideas for teaching math and homeschool. I've always been intrigued with the idea of using the Montessori method to teach our kids on the autism spectrum and also kids with learning differences. Unfortunately, when my kids were younger, the local Montessori school wouldn't accept anyone who was on the spectrum or who had special needs. That was not uncommon, and that's another story for another day. But let's talk about some of the benefits of the Montessori method for our kids. First, the Montessori method is developmentally appropriate, and that means that no new concepts are introduced until a student is ready to learn them. It starts with concrete representations of numbers and quantity, and then moves along the continuum to more abstract concepts. It's self-directed, which allows students to pursue their affinities and do things that they're interested in. And therefore, it provides a lot of opportunities for practice and repetition. It's multi-sensory, so it engages sight, sound, and touch in learning. And finally, it's self-correcting so that students can learn from their mistakes and become more independent. Some of the Montessori materials that I think would be great for a homeschool program are sandpaper numerals. They're perfect for tactile learning. Number cards and wooden counters. Addition and subtraction working charts. 
colored beads and golden beads in singles, strands of 10, cubes of hundreds and cubes of thousands, and fraction puzzles. Now there are a couple of drawbacks to using the Montessori method. The first is that it's taught in a very specific way and you'll have to either train yourself or find training for that. And also it uses very specific materials and those can be quite expensive. There are some websites that offer discounts or DIY and I'll provide links to those in the description and also some other helpful resources I've found. Even if you don't use the Montessori method solely for your math curriculum, you can still use parts of it. For example, the fraction puzzles are great if your student is struggling with fractions. So hopefully there are some things there that you can incorporate into your homeschool program to help your student learn math. Next, we'll talk about using touch math in your homeschool program. If you have a student who you think may not be able to do math or who has really significant learning challenges and is struggling, I recommend you have a look at touch math. This is the program that my son used for many years and it's the way he learned math and he didn't hate it. So that's kind of a ringing endorsement. Similar to Montessori, touch math is multi-sensory. It's engaging sight, sound, and touch all during math instruction. And on their website, they talk about the fact that it is a concrete to representational to abstract continuum, which we know that our autistic learners love for things to be literal and concrete. So we're going to provide that at the beginning and then provide scaffolding and support as they progress to more advanced concepts and more abstract concepts. I have a set here that is almost 20 years old. That's how long ago we started using this program. But on their website, they have updated materials and they also have digital resources now. I think maybe in the future, I might do just a few touch math videos by themselves and demonstrate how they teach the operations and advanced grades because some of their videos are quite old on their YouTube channel and I didn't see a lot on their website. So if that's something you think would be helpful, please let me know in the comments. I would be glad to do videos showing specific instruction for the curriculum. Everything with touch math revolves around touch points. And touch points are taught in a very specific counting sequence. So they're always in the exact same place and they're always counted in the exact same order. This emphasizes that numbers are quantities of something. And the program also includes manipulatives that are hands-on that will help teach these touch points. Once your student has mastered the touch points, they'll start moving on to simple operations such as single digit addition, where they will learn the concept of counting on from the top number when adding. At this point, once your student begins to master single digit addition, the program starts fading use of the touch points. Some of my son's teachers when he was younger were not sure about using touch math or maybe didn't want to because they said there aren't touch points in the real world and he may not be able to generalize those skills. But what I found is that when we began to fade the touch points, I would watch him work and he would either tap his pencil or make a motion as if a number had touch points on it. And eventually that faded as well and he could look at the number four and understand that that was a quantity of four. So the need for touch points will fade. Another thing I love about touch math is the very explicit and clear instruction and also the visual cues that the program uses for things like borrowing and carrying over. They also use columns and plenty of space for multi-digit operations, which is huge. I can't tell you how many students I've seen trying to work a problem in a space that's too small or in a space that's too big and they can't line everything up right and they get really frustrated. Graph paper is actually a great answer for that problem, but the Touch Math program provides that in their materials for your student. Once your student has mastered simple operations with touch math, you'll need to decide if it makes sense to continue with more advanced operations. I found that even with typical students, things like long division or three digit multiplication weren't really meaningful for them at that point. They kind of lost sight of the fact that I have 343 sets of 4,516 things. And we carry around with us a scientific calculator everywhere we go. So unless your student is going into a field like engineering or architecture, they probably don't need to pursue that. If you have a student who doesn't need the really basic instruction in a program like TouchMath, but who's struggling with a typical math curriculum, 
you might consider a program called Jump Math. Jump Math is a Canadian curriculum that my middle twin used for three years when we lived in Vancouver, British Columbia, and it's awesome. On their website, the program is described as structured inquiry. And what I love about it is that it breaks everything down into very clear steps that allow a student to discover how to solve a problem. It provides a lot of support and a lot of practice, and it slowly builds confidence so the student feels like they can solve challenging problems just by taking them one step at a time. Jump Math is designed to be taught in schools, but there are ways to order most of the materials for use in homeschool. The curriculum covers grades one through eight, and they have a lot of samples on their website if you'd like to give them a try. They also have homeschool workbooks that can be purchased online, and I'll leave a link for you in the description. Now let's look at teaching money and currency. The value of money is one of the most important things that you can ever teach your student in your homeschool program. And there are two basic things here. The first is identifying coins and dollars and their values. And the second is performing basic operations, such as getting change back or paying money to buy something. And I don't know about you, but I almost never carry cash. Pretty much everything is on my debit card. But we want our students to understand more than just, I use my debit card until I can't anymore, and then I have to add money to my account. I ran into so many students who are typical kids, who are typically developing, who didn't understand that concept. So this is something that's really important that you're going to want to teach in your program. Touch Math teaches currency using rote counting by fives, tens, and twenty-fives, which is obviously based on nickels, dimes, and quarters, and then also pennies. Some other ways that you can teach about money and currency are things like having your student count the money that you have in your wallet at a certain time, or letting them buy something at the store that they really want, and helping them wait for change and count out their change. If you don't want to go to a store, if you're not comfortable, you know, you don't want to hold up a line somewhere, which I've maybe done before, then you can do it at home. You can set up a little grocery store and you can have your student be the cashier or you can have them be the customer. I believe in using games and role playing and fun to teach math. This is the allowance game from Lakeshore Learning and I'll put a link to this in the description. It's a fun way to learn about math and money and also doing a job and getting paid for it. There are also so many websites with free or minimal subscription digital math games that I'll link to. Etsy is a surprisingly good resource for special education materials and you can find things like games for purchasing groceries or for going to a store and purchasing other things to get that math and that money and currency practice. If you have an advanced student and you're wondering about some of the topics that you can teach them that are meaningful, I would recommend you think about financial literacy. I personally think this should be a class for every student. It's things like having a bank account and how to balance your account, credit cards and credit card interest, loans. All of these things are helpful for our kids to learn and to know. Another cool idea is a stock market simulation. And there are a lot of different resources for this that have worksheets or that have websites or spreadsheets that'll help guide you through it. You can pick one or five or 10 stocks of companies that you use. You can follow and calculate their price movements. You can look at the analytics, even the fundamentals on them. That's something that you might have a student who gets into that and enjoys it. It might become an affinity. They may be the next great broker or trader. I hope I've given you some good ideas today about how to teach math in your homeschool program. And I hope you'll join us for our next video when I'm going to be talking about summer ideas that we've used in our summer camps for teenagers and young adults who are on the autism spectrum. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.